Hello, my name is Lars Carlson and I'm a makeup artist in this video. Uh, I'm going to show you how to apply silicone prosthetics. Um, the silicone prosthetics I'm going to use, they're made from Plat Gel 10 from Polytech. And you can get it from uh, a variety of different places, but I buy mine from Mold Life in England. I'm starting off here by putting on a bald cap. Um, for time reasons, I, I just did a gelatin bald cap because it mainly it's going to be covered by hair pieces, so it wasn't really needed to to be very good looking. I'm gluing this one down with uh, silicon adhesive from Cryolan. And uh, I don't really have to think about the edges and things about this uh, on this one because they're going to be covered by the silicon prosthetics that go over it. This application here is made for the theatre performance of, uh, or well, rather the opera performance of Don Giovanni on the Gothenburg Opera in 2004. And uh, as always, when you work on a theatre production, you have to keep application times really short because uh, you're not allowed to call in people that early so the entire application time of this one was about 30 minutes and uh, here you have the uh, the full application so I haven't taken anything out uh, I'll put a few close-ups in here and there so you can so you can see what I'm doing on the makeup table when I'm doing the application, I normally put all the silicon into syringes first. Uh, I don't like to stand by the makeup table with uh, scales and stuff because it, the risk of getting it wrong is is really imminent there. So put the silicon in syringes and then you know the mix is going to work. I'm mixing in a bit of flocking as well because then it makes it easier for me to see where I will actually put it on. This uh, makeup here I've, I've divided up into three parts the nose and upper lip, forehead and the jowls, cheeks and uh, uh, neck in one piece. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a it's important that you don't use a latex sponge when you put this one down because if you do the silicon won't gel. It's a really easy mix with black gel. It's 50-50 mix and it's uh, I just put it out on the skin very thinly and uh, put it outside of where the edges actually are because then I can use my fingers just to get the plat gel up on the edges too and that will help to cover the edge sponging it down a little bit slightly damp sponge so it won't stick to it and Peter, the model here, he's he's usually very chatty and everything, but he, we did the, the same makeup on him the um, year previously, and that was gelatin that time, and the it took so long to get it off. So this time, he I told him that if he can stay still, I will do it in silicon instead, and the removal process will be so much easier. So he, he agreed and he really came through for me and sat perfectly still. Because when you use the silicon like this, you really need to have your customer sitting still for at least 10 minutes. He can't move because if he does, it won't work. It will come off. You see... I'm working pretty fast here and a good thing about the silicon is that there's no solvents in it so you can put it right under the eye 
and it won't affect him at all and if you get it in in the eyelashes you just take a, a q-tip and and wipe it off before it dries it's really easy I'm also taking it up on the on the previous nose piece here so it will stick to that the reason why I'm mixing it in three different goes is that uh, I uh, noticed that it dried a little bit too quickly for me and I, I didn't want to put more re um, chemicals in it there is a retarder so you can have more work time but I thought it was easier just to mix three small batches and work with that it's very important that you don't miss any areas you have to cover the entire skin with the silicon because if you don't the uh, the piece will bulge there afterwards can't remember what I was doing here Let's see <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, we had a bit of a problem with uh, the piece coming off in the chin area. So what I did was uh, that I put a little bit of silicon glue there instead, because he kept moving. Singers tend to use their mouths a lot, and when we had the silicon glue on the chin, if it came off, he could just push it back down again. That was just for him to feel a bit safer. As you see it stuck there right away so it needs to come down in the exact right spot right away when you use the silicon glue when I'm using the the ordinary silicon I can move the piece around and it just slides in the wet silicon that is really nice I decided not to make the piece longer down on on the, on his neck because uh, he wore a high collar on it, so it didn't really matter. So I, I opted for his comfort instead. Found a little piece of flashing there that I missed earlier. really nice to work with the silicon here because it's so clean if you get it on your fingers you just wipe your hands with a little napkin or a, or a towel and you're all clean again when you do this with glue you always get glue everywhere on your fingers and you have to try to get it off and it won't stick but with silicon that's not an issue Okay, now I'm taking a little bit of silicon on the edge itself to, like I would use Bondo on, on a foam latex piece, I'm just covering the edges a little bit with uh, some more silicon. The flocking here really does the trick, so it, it fools your eye to, to think that you can't see the edge. If you want to, you can make the silicon a little bit thicker as well with some cabosil. Here, no one would really get closer to the makeup than like 8 meters, so uh, the edges weren't really that important, but I, I always want to make things look good for the actor when he looks in the mirror within time reason of course I had a few other makeups to do for this production as well right after this one so I was in a bit of a rush I'm 
taking a damp sponge again very important again that you don't use a latex sponge use an ordinary polyfoam sponge otherwise the silicon will inhibit and you will have to start over You can see as soon as I turn away he starts moving around a little bit just because he thinks that I couldn't see. The reason I made the um, the bald cap out of gelatin was because uh, I didn't have time to make a mold for to make a silicon one and uh, so I just took a, an ordinary rubber bald cap and uh, first I tried to, to put the silicon on top of it but of course that didn't work it latex inhibits silicon so what I did instead was I mixed up the same color um, in gelatin and just brushed it on the rubber bald cap can see it looks a bit messy on top there but because it's I would use the same bald cap about five times I tried to avoid getting too much silicon into his eyebrows because it's it's a bit painful to get it off otherwise when you glue things with plat gel like this the removal is amazingly fast and uh, you just come in to the makeup room and he starts pulling it off and the silicon I'm putting on his face has become one with, uh, with the actual piece so everything comes off automatically so less than two minutes removal time it's great I love it and the actors love it too Always a lot of curious eyes watching you when you do this. Had some problems getting the top edge of the forehead really thin, but fortunately that didn't really matter because it's covered by hair. The pieces, I, when I did them, the um, I injected them into the moulds. There's another little video here on my website where you can see um, a montage of, of stills where you can see the, um, how I made them. That's kind of a crucial edge there I'm working on the nose. It needs to come down perfectly, otherwise it was very visible. If I would do this makeup once again, I would probably do it as a one-piece thing and not have any edges whatsoever, but this was uh, one of the first times I did one of these really big makeups in silicon. So I, I didn't really know if it, if it was possible to, to do something that was that big, but it is it's great you don't have any of the shrinkage you had with the foam latex and if you glue it on with plat gel you just slide it until until it's in place I also pre-paint all the pieces and I don't paint that much really because I, I, 
when I do the silicon I put a mix of, of color in it already and um, so I don't really have to to paint that much but it's always you want to put some little reds in and he had some birth marks on his cheek there that I I wanted to fill in and I do that with Skin Illustrator. I didn't want to put any uh, of the black gel on his lips so uh, I'm using silicon glue there instead felt a bit safer. Now the um, gluing of the piece is done. Here's my favorite colors in the world, Skin Illustrator. You use, uh, they are alcohol based, so you have to use a bit of alcohol. You can use isopropyl alcohol or just ordinary drinking alcohol, <laughs> doesn't matter. I always dab it off before I put it onto the face or, or the makeup because uh, otherwise it comes a little bit too much at the same time. I spoke to a guy uh, just a few days ago who said he, he had tried to use silk paints instead of, of Skin Illustrator uh, with great results. It also stuck on really nicely and they're transparent too. So if you can't get Skin Illustrator where you where you are, you can always try to go to an art shop and try to find some silk screen paint. They're usually available in really thin uh, thin versions as well, so you can airbrush them on and it's nice to use. I'm just putting a little bit of colour on onto the edges to blend them together. His lips were supposed to be wide and I, I didn't want to cover his entire lip with the silicon so I'm just doing some painting there instead. Again, if I would do this again, I would probably put it all the way down on his lip, a little lower lip as well, to, to get a little bit more sunken in look to it. And if I would have the edge slightly higher up, I, I would not have the problem with the edge as I sometimes did here. can see that I'm not really caring about any of the edges that are not going to be seen making it very rough where the hair is going to cover it I did this um, really weird baroque wig for him out of buffalo hair um, and you will see later on. Um, we really tried to do something different, so I kept him with a comb over hairstyle and Baroque judge's wig that just came up to his temples. Never seen that done before, so it was quite fun to experiment with that. If you would do a normal old age, you would have to do ears here as well, but the the wig was covering the ears, so I didn't have to bother with that. 
always cheating as soon as I can. Save time and save work. darkening me around the eyes isn't there something I've learned was that if you try to use any grease paint whatsoever onto the silicon the edges become really visible so try to stick with transparent colors like skin illustrator and things otherwise you end up with problems even if it's a bit nasty to, to use the skin illustrator around the eyes because of the alcohol then try to do it as, as much as you can because uh, grease paint will ruin your day and you can't get it off once it's on there you don't have to powder it what I did earlier was just to use an almost clean powder brush just to apply a very 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 light coat of uh, a powder on the shiny edges and putting on the, the eyebrows lace eyebrows with silicon glue actually it wasn't a proper pair of eyebrows I, I didn't have time to make them so what I did was I took an old mustache with a pretty good shape to it and cut it in the middle and changed it to to become eyebrows. Cheating. <laughs> Put them pretty low to get in the way for his eyes because he couldn't have contacts because he's... I wanted to put a pair of uh, milky contacts on him but uh, he had uh, eye and eye surgery a couple of years ago and since then he's not allowed to wear contacts so I tried to cover his eyes with the, the droopy eye eyebrows instead. Here comes the comb over. You see all of the top edge there is covered with it. You couldn't see it. Quite nice with the uh, the gelatin bald cap here because uh, the hair stuck pretty nicely to it. So, and I just had to have a little bit of spray, and it would stay on there all day without moving. Here comes the wig. So I'm more or less done now. Here, eh? just have to the wig on and the silicon should all be dry now so really he, he should be able to start moving if he wanted to now but he was a bit scared to move when I was close and because I would thought I would yell at him This was one of the most difficult steps of this makeup to to get the the wig at the same height at the both sides. Otherwise, he just looked ridiculous. We didn't do any hand makeup either because he had some kind of gloves on. He was a uh, the commander, so he had leather gloves on I think that saved me a lot of time <laughs> but it was quite a physical part he was fencing and he was like fighting and I think I'm hurting him here but even if he sweated quite a lot in it it still stayed on we did have a, a little bit of problem as I said with the lower lip 
So I use the silicon there instead. Otherwise it's stuck on really nicely. Keeps bossing me around. More spray, more spray. I'm done. So now we just have to have a little look at him. Something you always thought that old men did was like putting their tongue out, which I never really understood. Keep doing that all the time. There he came, the little tongue. <laughs> It could move a lot more than he did, but he was still afraid to, to move around. Okay, that's it then. I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this, and uh, that you will watch other videos on, on my website here.